Hello, my name is TTJ Kepsi Richie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the notification bell so that if I post a video, you'll be the first to receive it. Today our discussion will still be on ordinary differential equations and we are still looking at first order ordinary differential equations. Remember we said that first order ordinary differential equations are either separable or non-separable. I took you through how to solve the separable ones. We said when they are non-separable, two things happen. They are either homogeneous or non-homogeneous. We also learn how to solve problems covering the homogeneous ones. We said that when they are non-homogeneous, there are two cases. Case 1 and case 2. I took you through how to solve problems covering the case 1. If you have not watched any of these videos, please go to YouTube. And search for the daily caps in Richie and watch videos covering those. Today, our attention will still be on the non homogeneous first order or non differential equation, but this time around, we'll deal with problems involving case two. This will be a very interesting discussion, so take a seat. So, uh, today, as I told you, we'll be finding solutions to non-homogeneous first order ordinary differential equations involving the case 2. If you remember vividly well, we said non-homogeneous uh, non first order ordinary differential equations take this form. They take this form. And we said that if the coefficient of the x term here, a2, is being divided by the coefficient of the x term here, a1, and it is not equal to the coefficient of the y term here b2 divided by the coefficient of the y term here b1 when they are not equal we call this case 1 then if we divide the coefficients that's a2 over a1 and it is equal to the b2 over b1 then we say is case 2 case 2 so we already solved problem covering case 1 and I know you'll be convenient with it now if you have really watched the video. If you didn't, please go to YouTube and search for the video case you reach it and watch the video covering that one. Today we are going for a situation where the coefficient, the y2 over, the a2 over a1 is equal to the b2 over b1. So come with me. So after you determine that your a2 over a1 is equal to your b2 over b1, then what next? What next? You will introduce a variable z and let it be equal to a1x plus b1y. So you say you let z or any variable at all be equal to a1x plus b1y. What's the next thing? You differentiate the z with respect to x and differentiate the y also with respect to x. So we said we have the z over the x. So on differentiate this, remember we get a1. Then plus on differentiate the uh, b1y, remember we get b1. But because the y is a dependent variable, we attach divide by ds to it. What's the next thing? The next thing is that you will make dy the subject of the equation. So, what's the next thing? Let's copy this there. So, since we have dz over ds is equal to a1 plus b1 dy over ds. We multiply through by ds to eliminate the d. So, all multiply through the ds here will go we'll get dz equal to a1 dx, if you really get that, plus we'll be left with b1 dy because the ds will also go. Now we'll make dy the subject. So, we have dz minus a1 dx will be equal to b1 dy and we can divide both sides by b1 so that the dy will be dy will be equal to 
our dz minus a1 dx all over our b1. So what do you do? Now you substitute, you substitute this first, you substitute this first z in a place of your a1x plus b1y. But remember, since they will be equal, there will be a common factor here between the a2 and the b2. You factor that one to out. When you factor out, this a1x plus b1, b1y will pop up here. So you let z be equal to them. Then you substitute z in place of them. Then in place of dy, you substitute this. Then what happens? It will become separable. It will become separable. Then you will separate it and integrate and find a function. After that, you substitute the necessary things that you let it be equal to a variable. You substitute them back to get your function. So we'll take a sample question and we'll see how we'll deal with that. So we want to solve one, our first question. Okay? Solve the differential equation below. That's x minus y plus 3ds minus 2s minus 2y plus 5dy equal to 0. So straightforward, this is non-homogeneous. It is non-homogeneous. But you have to find out which case is it. Is it case 1 or case 2? So we find out. What's our a1? Our a1 is 1. And our a2, a2 is 2. What's our b1? Our b1 is negative 1. That's the coefficient of the y term. And our b2 is negative 2. So what do we do? We divide the a2 by a1. So that will be 2 over 1. That will be equal to 2. Then b2 over b1. That will be negative 2 over negative 1. Equal to 2 as well. So you can see that our a2 over a1 is equal to our b2 over b1. So this is case 2. Case 2. Straight up, you know. Then you have to follow the steps or the process of solving the case 2. So come with me. So, after we're able to determine it is case 2, we go through the process of case 2. So, we can send this equation there. We can send this one there, since it's negative. You can keep it and solve. You still get the same thing. So, you can get x minus y plus 3dx and to equal to 2x minus 2y plus 5 dy. I hope, I hope you get that. This is positive, negative. One is saying that it can positive. See, there is a common factor, so you can factor out. You have x minus y plus 3dx equal to 2 out x minus y. See, 2 is common, so we bring it out. Plus 5 dy. Look at it. x minus y, x minus y. You see that they are the same. So we let z to be equal to that. So let z to be equal to x minus our y. Now what we do? We differentiate z with respect to x and differentiate the y with respect to x. So on differentiate z, we have dz over ds equal to on differentiate x is 1. On differentiate y is 1. However, it's a dependent variable. So we attach that to it. Remember, 1 times that to be dy by dx. What's the next thing? We make dy the subject. So we we'll multiply 2 by dx. So we'll be left with dz here. Remember, when dy dx multiply this. So we we'll have dx here minus dy. So when dx multiply 2, this is what we have. Now we we'll make dy the subject. So we we'll say our dy will be equal to dx minus dz. So we brought the dy here, we send the dz there. Now what is we'll, In place of x minus y, here and here we'll put z. And in place of dy, we'll put ds minus dz. So we substitute, we substitute. So in place of x minus y, we we'll put z. So in this place we we'll have 
z plus 3 dx. So in place of x minus 5, we put z there plus the 3. We'll be equal to, in place of the x minus y, we'll put z. So we'll have 2z plus 5. Then what's our dy? dy is the x minus dz. I hope you get that. So we expand, we distribute. So we have z dx plus 3 dx will equal to 2z times dx will get 2z dx then 2z times negative dz will get minus 2z dz then 5 times this will be 5 dx then this time that will be negative 5 dz What's the next thing? We bring all the DSs together and all the disease to the other side. So we have ZDX plus 3DS. There is a DS as so we have minus, minus 2. Minus 2Z DS. There is another DS here. It's positive. So we we'll get minus 5DS and to be equal to what we have, we have dz here, so minus 2z dz, then minus 5 dz. So we we'll try to factor out our ds out. So we we'll factor ds out, we'll be left with z plus 3 here, minus 2z minus 5 ds. And to look at to we we'll factor out our disease, so we left minus two z minus five dz. So we we'll polish this z minus two z that will be negative z. Then three minus five will be negative two ds. And to look at to negative two z minus five. DZ. So, this is where we, there is something common. We bring it out. Negative is common. So we have negative out Z plus 2 DS and to be got another negative out 2Z plus 5 DZ. So, when we divide both sides by negative 1, the negative should go away. So what will be left? We'll be left with z plus 2 ds equal to 2z plus 5 dz. Now we need to divide both side by z plus 2 to make it separable. So when we divide, so we have by z plus 2 here over z plus 2. So what will be left? We'll be left with dx equal to 2z plus 5 over z plus 2 dz. Now we have separated it. So we will do what? We integrate both sides. We integrate both sides. Remember, the, there is a constant here which is 1. So I will integrate this with respect to x, we get x. Part of this. Part of this. We are going to integrate this by first resolving into partial fraction. Since the, the degree here is the same as the degree here. So when we are resolving partial fraction, when the degrees are the same, we know it's type 4. So we need to resolve it into partial fraction first before we integrate. So that's the next thing we'll do. We'll pull this out. We'll pull the 2z plus 5 over z plus 2dz and resolve and, and, and integrate by resolving this into partial fraction. So we need to first use polynomial to divide this. So the divisor will divide the dividend. So we get a remainder, we get a quotient and a remainder of our divisor. Then we try to integrate that. So I'll take you through that. So as I said, 
We need to integrate this, and we know the integral of this already, but this we need to resolve it into partial fashion. And we said this is a type 4, so we need to divide first using polynomial. So the dividend inside 2z plus 5, and the divisor here. So if z go here, we will let, it will be 2, z times 2 will be 2z. 2 times 2 will be 4, so plus 4, plus 4. Now we subtract. This minus this is 0. 5 minus 4 is 1. So the remainder is 1. So we can say that our 2z plus 5 over z plus 2 will be equal to the quotient 2 plus remainder 1 over the divisor z plus so the integral of this, the integral of 2z plus 5 over z plus 2dz will just be equal to the integral of 2 plus 1 over z plus 2dz. Look at that. The integration of this is just 2z. And the integration of this will be lean z plus 2. I know you do. You get that by now. So, when we integrate this, simply we'll get 2z plus lean z plus 2. Remember, plus our constant of integration. So, maybe c. So, what next? We're having this. We're having this. So, the integral of this, we have the integral of dx equal to the integral of 2z plus 5 over z plus 2dz, right? So I'm going to integrate this to get x, maybe plus c. Let's put our constant here. Now I'm going to integrate this, we have this. I'm going to integrate this, we have that. We have 2z plus lean z plus 2 so we shouldn't bring our constant of it if you put it at any side it is the same it's the same you get the same thing so we have this but remember our z we said should be equal to x minus y from the beginning if you remember very well so in place of z we put our x minus y so our x plus c we we'll call it 2 into bracket x minus y plus lean x minus y plus 2. So, what do we have? We have x plus c. We we'll call it 2x minus 2y plus lean x minus y plus 2. So, what next? We we'll just make our c the subject by sending x. There. So, our c will we'll be equal to 2x minus x so the x goes there minus 2y plus lean x minus y plus 2 our c will be equal to x minus 2y plus lean x minus y plus 2 so this become our general solution so anytime any boundary condition is given we can find c to get our specific solution We'll solve another question on this so that you get a better understanding. So we'll solve the second question under it. We'll solve the second. So you know that this is not homogeneous. But you determine which case is it. So remember our A1 is equal to 1. And our A2 is 2. So our B1 is 2. And our B2 is 4. So A2 over A1 will be 2 over 1 equal to 2. Then B2 over B1 is 4 over 2 equal to 2. So, so we realize our A2 over A1 is equal to the B2 over B1. That's what case 2. So after I realize this case too, 
remember you introduce the variable z so so now we are going to introduce a variable z but first we need to bring out a common factor out here so that this can look the same as that i know you get that so after we determine it was case two we need to factor out this so we have x plus 2y plus 3 dx plus y is common 2 is common so x plus 2y minus 1 dy is equal to 0 so you realize so you realize that this is the same as that so you let z to be equal to it so z should be equal to x plus 2y now what we do we differentiate this so we have dz over dx on differentiate s it will be 1 plus on differentiate this we get 2 because it's a dependent variable we know implicit what do we do we multiply 2 by dx so our dz will be equal to dx plus 2 dy we we'll make dy the subject so our dz minus dx is equal to 2 dy so when we divide both sides by 2 our dy will be equal to dz minus dx all over 2 so what is the next thing we we'll substitute z in place of x plus 2y for this and that and we we'll substitute this in place of dy so we raise this place we substitute we substitute so in place of this we put this we have z plus 3 dx it will be called uh, plus sorry now 2 the whole of that we put z minus 1 then in place of dy we we'll put this so we have dz minus dx all over 2 equal to zero. Remember, you can say this there, but you get the same thing. What we do, we multiply through the equation by 2. So we have 2 times z plus 3 dx plus 2z minus 1. Then we have our dz minus dx. And it will still be equal to zero. So we expand now. This will multiply this we get 2z. This multiplies you get 6 dx and plus 2z minus 1 dz minus dx equal to 0. Now we distribute. So we get 2z dx plus 6 dx. We expand this. This time this will be plus 2z dz then this time that will be minus 2z dx this time this will be minus dz then this time this remember will be plus so plus ds equal to zero so what's the next thing we we'll bring all the dx's together and all the dz disease together so we say we group like them by bringing all the dx's together so we have 2z dx plus 6 dx there is a dx here so minus 2z dx there is another dx here so plus dx then we have plus 2z dz then minus dz equal to 0 when we finish you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 one, two, three, four, five, six. Just to be sure you did the grouping very well. What's the next thing we factor out? We have two z. One factor out the x. We have two z plus six minus two z. Remember it will be left with one there. Then the x. So we factor out the dz two. So remember we have two z minus 1 dz and to equal to 0 what is the next thing 
we solve c two z minus two z will be zero. Six plus one will be seven. So we have seven dx plus two z minus one dz is equal to zero. So we have we are succeeded in separating them. What's the next thing we integrate? We integrate. When we integrate seven x, seven will get seven x. Maybe plus our constant. Oh no, because we did not send it there. We we'll add a constant to that side. Plus, when we integrate this to z, remember the the law of integration. Add one to the exponent and divide the function by the result. So when we do that, we we'll get z square. When we integrate a constant, it will be z is equal to our constant. You see. What's the next thing? Remember we said z. Is equal to look at it, check, check. We say z is equal to x plus 2y. So in place of z, we put x plus 2y. So we say z is equal to x plus 2y. So we start it. So again, 7x plus x plus 2y square minus x plus 2y equal to c. So we can expand it. So we have 7x plus x square this will be 2xy, 2xy, so 4xy then plus our 4y square then we, we, we expand this to minus x minus 2y is equal to c we arrange it to so have our x square plus 4y square Remember that, 4y squared. Then, look at it, we have 7x minus s. So we'll get plus 6x. 7x minus s will be plus 6x. Then, we have y, so minus 2y plus 4xy is equal to c. Then this becomes our general solution. I hope you get this. Please play over the video and I know you will get a concept. Please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's very necessary. And hit the notification bell so that anytime I post a video, you will be the first to receive it. Until we meet again, bye-bye.